This country was founded on the premise that I cannot tell you what is right for you, and you cannot tell me what is right for me. 51% of the population should not get to tell 49% how to live, what they should believe, and how they should go about their daily lives. 99% of the population should not take away the rights of 1%, because if the rights of one person are not respected and preserved, then the rights of us all are subject to restrictions. Legislating morality is not about right and wrong. It's about our government or politicians' belief that their version or idea of what's right is worth more and should carry more weight in our lives than our own moral codes. As if to say we are not responsible enough to decide what we should or should not put in our bodies, teach our children, or live our day-to-day -day lives. It is not the role of government to adjust my moral compass simply because it lies in a position that is not deemed to be appropriate or popular or in line with the current idea that are propagated by political affiliations right now. I have the right as an individual soul to hold true in my heart what I see fit. Even if my moral codes are such that they cause me harm, as long as exercising my moral codes and prerogatives does not infringe upon or harm anyone else. This is the very fiber of what true freedom is. I have the inherent right to be free of policy, law, and coercion in any form that creates an imperative that I change my or conform to your beliefs. And exercising this right should not incur a penalty. No person should find it any more taxing to exercise a right than it is to not exercise them. The thing that makes this kind of liberty restriction so hard to swallow is the fact that abroad our government is involved in and is the main offender in some of the worst human rights violations to occur in history. To date, over one million Iraqi citizens have been brutally murdered as a direct result of our government's moral imperative to liberate the citizens of Iraq. The number of Iraqis that have lost their homes, possessions, and jobs? Four million. That's four million people who have nothing to do with terrorism or the 9-11 attacks? That's equal to all the people in Philadelphia, Dallas, and San Diego put together. The government that has caused this suffering and death? Our government. The same institution that here at home tries to tell us what we cannot eat or smoke or drink. Are they morally correct? I've heard the argument that there's a basic standard of morals that a society must adhere to, lest it break down into chaos. And this is, of course, common sense. But should it be dictated to us under threat of penalty? When we believe the propaganda that it is anyone's business, what you do in, in or with your home, bedroom, or your body, especially in the name of security, then we are usurping the very principles on which this country was founded as a republic, where the rights of one person are just as important as the rights of every person. We have lapsed in our responsibilities as citizens. We have become lazy in the oversight of our government. All government is meant only to serve the people. If the structure and process of governing becomes polluted, then it is the prerogative of the people to redress their grievances and restore a governing body of their choosing. Our society has become accustomed to the coddling of citizens in the form of government-funded welfare programs and social aids, which intercedes in just about every aspect of the person's life. Our government should, according to the framers of the Constitution, only have the power to which the people have agreed to allow it. And if we allow our governments to dictate our choices, we're no longer a free, independent, sovereign individual. We have become as a slave.